Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And for those of you who were expecting a video last week, unfortunately, uh, I caught COVID, so uh, couldn't make a video last week, And um, but I'm back. Uh, this week uh, with the usual uh, weekly analysis. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, the video content and with your uh, colleagues and just support the channel, I guess. A free way to support the channel and get the quality content out there to those who um, will benefit from both uh, fundamental and technical analysis to really make the best trading decisions. Anyways, let's get into the uh, week ahead and uh, I guess I'll zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> uh, week ahead in the US, the center stage will be taken uh, by the latest FOMC meeting minutes, retail sales and housing data. Elsewhere, the investors uh, will pay attention to inflation figures for the UK, Japan and Canada. Other important releases include uh, ZEW uh, economic sentiment, index for Germany, industrial uh, production for China, unemployment rates for Australia and uh, UK and second quarter uh, GDP growth for Japan. And um, there are some, uh, some devils in the detail um, when it comes to um, the specifics and I definitely advise you guys to go to tradingeconomics.com and basically have a read up on uh, the specifics and what's happening this week. Also as well in Australia, um, Outside of obviously, you know, the major three uh, currencies, you've got uh, Australia unemployment figures um, will be released. RBA will divulge minutes from its August meeting, sharing insights behind the central bank's 50 basis point rate hike. Uh, in the meantime, the RBNZ, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, is expected to raise its official cash rate by 50 basis points as well. So definitely worth um, keeping an eye on um, if you're trading those currencies. Um, yeah, so let's get into the uh, the charts and some more fundamentals. And uh, looking at the dollar index, and the dollar index has been um, an interesting one. Um, last week, uh, or say say the week before last, uh, I was saying that I'm still a buyer of the uh, the dollar and uh, looking for uh, some opportunities. And um, the dollar. Um, when we look at uh, uh, recent um, inflation data, uh, the it, you know it came out as coming uh, uh, running cooler, right? As as far as uh, inflation coming down. Now, one of the things that you have to understand if you're watching this and you're thinking about you know um, you know you're not too sure about inflation and interest rates and how you know it all works in the economy. Um, I have a, a free webinar on YouTube. It's called uh, the Fundamental Analysis Webinar: The Three Steps to Generating a Profitable uh, Forex Trade Ideas, and um, it's it really kind of breaks down um, the rules to the fundamental game, right? Um, the you know why inflation, interest rates, and um, GDP uh, are, are really the the the. Um, why you should understand the relationship between the three and how central banks um, dictate monetary policy, right? Whether they hike, hold, or cut rates based off of um, those three macroeconomic uh, data points. So, um, and that creates either demand or supply uh, for a uh, currency and appreciates or devalues a currency. So, it's important to know, um, you know, why when inflation goes higher, um, and above the 2% target that central banks have to hike rates and if it goes below um, their 2% target, uh, inflation target, then central banks generally typically have to cut and when they should hold. Um, otherwise, you really are at a disadvantage when it comes to understanding um, what, what pairs and currencies to trade. Anyways, so um, the inflation figures uh, decelerated in July by more than expected, reflecting lower energy prices, which may take some pressure off the Fed uh, or the Federal Reserve to continue aggressively hiking rates. And um, yeah, it was um, it was interesting, but we really need to see a sustained, I guess, um, 
uh, uh, pull back in inflation or inflation as it's pulling back needs to be um, not just a, a bit of a blip. And what you're seeing as well is that uh, Morgan Stanley's uh, Chalette warns of head fake in inflation data. So premature for market to celebrate uh, CIO at the firm says. So, um, you know, inflation, yes, it's pulled back, but it doesn't mean that necessarily the Fed are going to, um, you know, stop hiking rates or looking to, you know, even cut rates, which is uh, on the cards probably next year. But for now, um, you know, all the data is still pointing to the fact that they still will want to um, hike rates. And uh, this is from uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, one second. Yeah, yeah, so Wells Fargo, 12th of August. Again, just this little bit here where it says piecing together the implications of the week's softer than expected inflation data with last week's blowout non-farm payroll report for the Fed's policy path is top of uh, is top of mind for many. The FOMC has made it clear that it needs to see inflation slowing on a sustained basis. Yeah, so doesn't mean that, um, you know, the Fed are going to stop hiking rates um, looks like they're probably still going to continue to uh, hike rates hence the reason why i personally am still a buyer of the dollar but until inflation proves that it is trending back towards a two percent target right that would be maybe the uh the, the for me anyway um uh, a signal to potentially look to actually uh, start to sell the dollar but again there are other things uh, that that come into play there as well and um also as well this is just uh, I guess uh, some confluence from a uh, Citibank and uh, Citibank are pretty much saying that if you look at around here the triggers for a sustainable and again there's that word again sustainable DXY a dollar index reversal would need to be for the Fed to reconsider its current tightening, cy tightening cycle so um, again they would only really consider that current tightening cycle if the um, uh, if inflation starts to come down and uh, it looks like it's trending back towards their 2% target. So again, um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about or you're, you know, you're a bit fuzzy uh, and you know, just a bit confused when it comes to uh, you know, inflation, interest rates um, and GDP, then this really is the uh, the webinar. Watch it. It's two and a half, two yeah, about two hours. Um, has all the information you could possibly need to get started with understanding inflation, interest rates, um, GDP, and really generating profitable uh, forex trade ideas. Anyway, let's get back to the charts. So for me, um, you know, it's just a case of you know buying the dollar on pullbacks. Um, and so using the DXY um, dollar index as confluence, it's just a case of looking at, you know, pullbacks into certain zones and then uh, using the um, trading the uh, maybe something like the dollar yen or the dollar, maybe the dollar Swiss, I'm not really, really a dollar Swiss uh, fan at the moment, pretty euro dollar and pound dollar short. Uh, and using the DXY as basically just, uh, just confluence. So um, for me, looking at still buy trades, um, if you are looking at sell trades, then in fact there is a supply zone around around here, quite a large one, but probably the better area would be the fresher area of supply around the one oh sevens before looking at getting short. But um yeah, um again using that as confluence. Um I, I personally wouldn't necessarily short the dollar regardless whether it comes down this week. Um I'm looking at more medium to long term trades as far as um, you know what prices are likely to do over the next month to two months to three months anyways um, moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again uh, after the so-called um, you know technical recession we did have prices start to go down again I did was saying that I'm going to be a buyer of the dollar we did see obviously the dollar come higher pulled back a bit and it's um, it came down to a nice zone matter of fact but didn't quite get an entry uh, this week. I wanted to come down a bit lower to the 13150s. Um, that's what I was really looking for. If it does come down here, then I will be a buyer of the uh, of the dollar yen. I say I will be, but um, it depends on the, on the entry and whether it gives me an entry. But that for me now is starts to be um, a decent uh, demand zone. If you are looking at sell trades, um, then you have got a supply zone right there. So any pullbacks into uh, this area here is decent for a sell trade. If you're looking to, if you think the Japanese yen is a, is a bargain at these prices, the one three five one three five fifties. Moving on to the 
dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, strengthened, sorry, sorry, the, the dollar Swiss, sorry, uh, the Swiss has strengthened against the dollar, you know, risk off sentiment, etc. Um, and it's not really a pair that I'm interested in because you really do have two central banks that are looking to hike rates. Um, the Swiss National Bank is hiking rates as, alongside the, uh, the US dollar, whereas the, the dollar yen, uh, the Bank of Japan, are not looking to hike rates at the moment. So for me, again, understanding divergences and monetary policy divergences, the easier trade um, is the dollar yen. Um, any pullbacks, if you want to be a buyer of the, of the US dollar, then that's where you should look for sell trades. I'm sorry, buy trades. If you're looking for uh, short trades on this currency pair, looking to buy the Swiss franc, and any pullbacks into that 95.50 area is where you're looking for a uh, short trade. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD. Dollar CAD. Um, CAD strengthening against the uh, the US dollar at the moment. And again, maybe just maybe some sentiment. But um, again, not really a pair that I'm interested in fundamentally because you've got two uh, central banks uh, hiking rates. Um, and it's not just really about the hiking of rates um, because some um, uh, hikes in rates um, aren't always positive. Um, uh, there, there are such things called dovish hikes, but if you are looking to get um, long on this currency pairs and buy the US dollar, then I think you'd have to really kind of wait for the prices to come down to this uh, demand zone or prove that there's demand right there and then wait for a pullback down into the zone and then look for a buy trade there. Uh, if you're looking for a sell, then anything within this uh, supply zone, looking at sell trades. But um, again, um, with more risk off coming into the market or in the market, I'd probably say the dollar might be the um, uh, the, the, the buy out of the two, but again, not really a pair that I'm interested in. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, I think the, uh, the, the, the hike that the uh, New Zealand dollar are looking to, uh, the RBNZ are looking to uh, do this week um, is being priced in. So um, yeah, a little bit of dollar weakness, I guess, and, um, and the pricing in of the, uh, of the New Zealand dollar uh, rate hike. Um, I think this might be a decent buy the rumor, sell the fact type of uh, trade. Um, again, not really interested in, this, in trading this pair um, simply because um, I'm actually a buyer of the New Zealand dollar uh, against other currencies. <clears throat> so, um, and if I was going to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar, it definitely wouldn't, would not be against the US dollar, not right now anyways. So any pullbacks, I think are decent buying opportunities technically, uh, or if you want to buy the, the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar, if you want to buy the US dollar against the New Zealand dollar, then you're looking at um, a pullback into this 65 area, 65.50s before a, for a bit of a sell trade. Um, moving on to the pound dollar now, this is something that I am interested in. And um, pound fundamentally is, um, is, isn't is doing great. And we have the UK economy shrinks for the first time since COVID lockdown and June's reading stronger than expected, but may revise down. And um, uh, the UK economy shrank for the second quarter for the first time since the pandemic, driven by a decline in spending by households and um, on fighting the coronavirus. We sure are fighting that coronavirus. Um, so um, it says, uh, David uh, Barrier, head of research at the BCC says, uh, the UK economy is moving in an alarming direction. Yeah, while some consumer facing industries have benefited from further withdrawals of COVID restrictions on travel, the retail sector saw 1% decline in the quarter reflected in unprecedented pressures from inflation and global supply chain disruptions. So it's not looking great for, um, uh, for the UK and the pound is something that I am looking to, uh, to short uh, in, 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 well now, from now, next uh, coming months. So looking at, um, well, against the dollar anyway, and uh, any any pullbacks into this zone, I was just waiting, prices didn't come up high enough for me to get involved in a bit of a, a stop hunt that around that one, two, three area. Um, but if prices do come back, I'm looking to get involved in that trade uh, to the short side or any trades. Uh, if prices do pull back into into this zone, this one, two, three to one, two, four area. Um, for any short trades. If you are a buyer of the pound and you want to be a buyer of the pound, then you do have, um, I guess, a bit of a demand zone right there. Um, 
but yeah, not the strongest area of demand there. Um, but yeah, maybe the one yeah one twenty eighty uh, area for a decent uh, buy trade. But if we're looking at where we are in terms of what's expensive and what's cheap, um, then you're looking really. At, I think the lows are going to be the one eighteens, one seventeens are going to be the best area to look for any kind of buy trades. Uh, moving on to the euro dollar, and the euro dollar is again something I'm interested in. Uh, selling uh, there was a bit of a supply zone that had been touched several times and as we know um, the more times the level is touched the weaker it becomes now fundamentally um, uh, Europe I think everyone's in pretty much the same boat um, but interest rate hike requires the ECB will limit interest rate hikes to this year only HSBC says and the, uh, the European Central Bank will stop hiking interest rates after the end of 2022 when a euro area recession and easing price pressures will restrain monetary policy tightening according to HSBC. Um, cuts to Russian natural gas supplies and resulting surges in energy costs will drive inflation higher than previously expected to a peak of 10% in October, HSBC economists uh, double digit inflation. Um, led by Simon Wells said Friday in a report to clients the squeeze on household incomes will make a recession probably unavoidable and so um, uh, we also have um, uh, a bank uh, MUFG are also looking to you know open up a new short euro dollar trade um, and they're adding to euro um, dollar shorts you know with Europe risks set to continue to wait on FX performance so um, this is uh, this is their um, analysis um, of again who the who's got the who's the dog with the least fleas right so um, meaning that who's the who's the best of the worst and um, it looks when you're comparing Europe with um, with the US it looks like Europe are in a worse situation than the US which would continue uh, the um, you know the, the continued downturn right I'm not saying it's going to go do that this week it could go higher before it goes lower right but overall. Um, Path of these resistance is probably still to the downside, unless obviously certain things change. And um, and again, um, that would be things like the Nord Stream pipeline. So um, going back to Citibank, um, you know, any any you know um, changes in in euro dollar uh, shorts would be you know for the threat of Europe's e uh, economic recovery from Russia to clearly subside. So if that starts to happen. Um, then you probably might want to actually look for any kind of euro buyers because there will be probably a bit of a rally uh, on on Europe um, if they can you know survive economically from uh, Russia's uh, Russia turning off the tap. So uh, my bias is to the downside still, um, but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro, then you're looking at um, probably the bottom end of this demand zone to look for any kind of long trades there or right you know again around parity for any kind of long trades um, to the upside Aussie dollar uh, Aussie dollar has just made gone from strength to strength the uh, Australian dollar is doing um, decent economically and um, yeah so uh, we're seeing a um, bit of a pullback as long due a pullback to be fair and um, but in a straight fight you probably will see the US dollar um, in a risk-off environment should you know um, should strengthen and uh, there should be a decent uh, if you do want to get short on this currency pair and short in Australian dollar that would be a decent area to look for any kind of short trades if you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar any pullbacks down to this 70 cent area is decent for a, um, a buy uh, not really much to say about that Although I am a buyer of the Australian dollar, I'm not a buyer of the Australian dollar against the uh, US dollar, so not really a pair I'm interested in. Aussie yen, I am interested in, um, and again, some of the guys have been doing really well in this trade. We was talking about this, um, well, my bias anyway, um, to buy the uh, um, Aussie dollar, and uh, we did get a bit of a spike below, uh, taking out all the stops, and we've made higher highs, higher lows since. So. Um, buyer of the Aussie dollar one second just putting that there actually yeah, it's going to have to cover the whole the whole spectrum right there um, so yeah any pullbacks into uh, I'll probably say this area here one sec right. well you 
we've also got support and resistance with supply and demand so this 92 round number is probably going to be decent for a you know pullback and then a decent buy um, providing obviously uh, that the Japanese yen and the Bank of Japan is still looking to uh, you know maintain their dovish um, bias on the uh, on the yen so um, so yeah, any pullbacks I think into a zone. The 90, I think the 93 is a bit too too much of a shallow uh, pullback. I think probably the 93 is they're going to be the start of it down to 92s if we get anything, and even the 91s would be an even you know better price. I think that'd be a very nice trade technically if prices do come back down there. But if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, Japanese yen, you know risk sentiment can shift. Um, um, then pretty much now and even up at the highs I think are going to be decent sell trades um, technically um, to buy the Japanese yen and gold so gold um, has rallied a bit on um, I guess global recession fears um, I was saying again a few weeks ago that you know gold is, was a buy and you could pretty much see what's happened right decent area to look for uh, uh, buy trades on gold um, if we're looking at um, oh, one second to go forward if you think that the uh, dollar is uh, weak I guess one of the things that you should do is maybe if you don't want to sell the dollar uh, look to buy gold and I think a pullback into that 176 round number is going to be decent I think if it does come all the way down to the 1700s um, I think anything around there and it just below it is going to be nice as well so um, uh, as we head into next year as we head into next year um, and potential recession fears a lot of the smart money I was if you go back through my previous videos uh, the last uh, couple of weeks and look at the gold analysis I was explaining this and breaking this down that the smart money have been buying gold as prices have been going lower and lower right they don't buy like how retail buy where they just you know trading with um, you know tight stop losses and day trading they're accumulating over the long term because they understand that um, you know in the next uh, 12 months for example if uh, you know the world is going into a recession and uh, central banks and uh, have to potentially look to cut rates you know into 2023 which is only maybe less than uh, five months away now because we're in August um, you know the smart money were buying well well before the um, uh, the uh, the retail and uh, I think prices you know on pullback should definitely be uh, buying opportunities um, even if you're buying just physical gold etc um, but yeah that's pretty much it think um, I'm definitely a buyer of uh, gold on any pullbacks so uh, that's my bias um, uh, for the medium to long term anyways guys that will be it for this week I uh, hope you had a great trading week and uh, speak to you all soon